A few years ago, we moved home to the rainforest with a dream to live a simple life guided by nature. What followed was beyond anything that we could have ever imagined. The smallest things taught us the largest lessons. The morning mist, the afternoon light, a dragonfly's wing or summer's rain. There have been struggles and hardships, floods and fires, but these intricacies of nature always serve as gentle reminders of our purpose, to live in harmony with nature. Our grandparents moved here 60 years ago and planted trees throughout the rainforest. Then our parents tended the trees, and now it is our turn. The fruits that they planted act like gifts, guiding our way forward. The night was open, the rain was cold. As we plant new trees into the healing earth, we hope for them to feed and nurture generations to come. We follow the cycles of the seasons and learn from the earth's gentle ways. Summer is almost here and with its touch, the mist has begun to rise from the earth and the garden blooms vibrantly. Mostly, the joys, the hardships, the beauty and the struggles have taught us that it is all part of it. We have learned to see our lives like an artwork and our artworks like a life. We don't try to view it all at once, but instead notice a convergence of many elements entwined. A painting consists of a million tiny strokes, and a life consists of a million tiny moments. But I was broken after you spoke. This week, we celebrated the release of our book, and after years of writing, creating, gardening, and farming in the mountains, our life changed completely. We've been traveling to Sydney for events and interviews. We've been hosting book launches, attending galas, and seeing our work on the big screen. We'll take you along for the whole ride, but firstly, we'll go back to a sunny day in the studio, preparing for the huge week ahead. Julia is painting a massive landscape to display at our book launch. She is painting the hills and the mist, the sunrise, and the feeling of being cradled by these mountains. It feels surreal, but very soon we will be travelling to London to exhibit many paintings, drawings, and dresses from the book. We're going to take this special painting along too, because it feels like the perfect way to bring the feeling of the rainforest all the way across the world to the big city of London. As she paints, I am sewing a dress to wear to a special climate film screening and the book launch. I am creating this dress from old handkerchiefs that I have collected from many op shops. I have been planning this zero waste project for years, but waiting until I collected enough. After years of collecting, I think that I finally have enough. In the local secondhand shops, I even gave the op shop ladies my number so that they could call me if any come in. My first step was to pin all of the hankies together to check that it really would work. Thank you. 
want to make this kind of top of it, so I'm draping because I feel like that's best for the material just to really work out how it's going to fall, and this is just a similar cotton, so I'm experimenting with that. But I think that I want this strong waistband, so I'll fuse that with a harder material with that. And then this, I like the gather here, and then quite like almost a squarish neckline. So I'm going to draw it on, and then I'm going to cut it out, and then I might make a proper pattern piece from it and then make a toile or a practice and see how it works out. shape of everything and to kind of work out the final shape but I'm really happy with it. It's just put together with a basting stitch so then I can just unpick it all and then get these pieces and then use them as a pattern piece to make a real thing. But I like it. I think it'll have like straps from up here and I think it really suits the handkerchiefs. It kind of honors them. <laughs> So using that design, but that'll be scratched down. And then yeah. So I have this handkerchief, but it's probably my favorite one. It's so beautiful. The colours are just incredible. But it's got a few tears in it. I think the fabric's a bit soft and could tear more. So I'm thinking it's the perfect piece for this bust piece because then it's got gather and it's just a bit a bit of a safe place for it and I can avoid this perfectly with the curve of this shape. So it's so exciting, I can make use of every little bit of that work. That's gonna be so beautiful.
I'm so nervous when I'm working with these beautiful old materials. I cut this and it was a little bit too much on the bias so that there was a bit too much stretch up here and I was really worried it wasn't going to work. I, I think it is now, but I just, I get so concerned working with all of these incredible vintage materials and it's kind of funny because so many people think of those old handkerchiefs and would be like, I wouldn't even touch them. But I think of them as so precious that I'm so afraid to even cut them. It took me like 15 minutes to actually make the first cut because I just sat there so nervous. <laughs> So I'm just trying to find the radius of the circle that I cut out for the waist and it's a bit scary. I made this one just out of fabric just to make sure that it was right and I think it is but I'm just redoing the maths and with fashion you just round pi to three which I find really funny because I always loved maths in high school and then I got to fashion and was doing these like complex equations and my teachers were like no Anastasia you just have to round it up. It's really easy. <laughs> So I think that that means that the radius should be about 11 centimeters. I hope so. Something I was really stressed about as I was making it, but 
I, you know, I didn't want to cut Benny and I really wanted to make sure that they were as beautiful as they could be and I think that they are. I'm so proud of this. And I think it's perfect for the event. As I sew 41 handkerchiefs to make a dress, or I see Julia paint thousands of strokes to create a painting, it reminds me of all the small things in life coming together to make something big. We can't help but reflect on the many moments that have accumulated to create this platform, and now to have been given this incredible opportunity to write a book. Seams, strokes, moments or friendships all hold power in their collective activation. And this is why we are so grateful to you, for each comment or view, each message or new friendship. Without you, we would have never had these opportunities, and we're just so grateful. <laughs> Look at this, Dahlia. Have you seen my cup Yeah. harvested many blooms for our book launch and it felt like the most beautiful visualization of seeing our community come together and celebrate. We had the most beautiful night surrounded by old friends, new friends and family. It's so funny because for the days beforehand it had been raining lots which has been so beautiful but is not ideal for an event. The forecast kept predicting wild thunderstorms, but on the evening, the sun shined through golden and the skies completely cleared. It was life-changing to meet so many people who watch these videos and share the same appreciation for nature. We watched Indira Elias perform, which was truly incredible. Indira's beautiful voice is celebrated throughout our videos and to hear her echo through these rolling hills of our home felt like true magic. Also went to Sydney and did a radio interview on the ABC. This is Australia's national radio station, so it was pretty nerve-wracking, especially because I have always been so terrified by public speaking. We were invited to the Royal Botanic Gardens for a YouTube climate screening. Bittersweet 
There's a huge thunderstorm rumbling, which feels funny in the city. But we are about to go to this climate YouTube event, which we're really excited about. And then also, in like a few minutes, there's a live stream on the radio where I'm speaking about our book, which is pretty wild as well. After finding shelter from the storm, we tuned into the radio and listened to me talk about our life and book. We then saw our work on the big screen and met so many inspiring climate filmmakers. While we are in Sydney, we dropped into the Greenpeace HQ and talked with their CEO, David Ritter. Greenpeace is a campaigning network that defends the natural world, standing for a green and peaceful future. Their work has always inspired what we do, so to see the intricacies of tools and resources for different actions was really incredible. There were boats, climbing ropes, harnesses, sewing machines, and basically anything you could ever imagine. <laughs> we arrived home again, but quickly had another event to prepare for. So we've been invited to a gala, which is very exciting. It's actually Steve Owen's family's gala, which is even more exciting because honestly Steve Owen and his family have done so much for conservation in Australia that they are always inspiring us with everything that we do. So I'm going to go to Brisbane and it's a black tie event, which is, I have never been to a black tie event. So I have this vintage dress that I've never worn, but I'm really excited about it. It's basically just a princess dress, but because it's very, very vintage, I'm not sure what era it would be made in, maybe the 50s? It's kind of falling apart, but that's part of the beauty as well. But I'm just going to sew up all of the ribs and make sure that it's wearable for tonight. <laughs> Zero waste is so important to us on the farm and we like to take that into everything we do. So. This dress was once loved a very long time ago and it's all broken now, but we still see so much potential in it and it's so much more beautiful than going out and buying a new dress for this event, instead just reusing this beautiful old dress. And I think that the little stitches that I'm adding that are visible, I think that they're beautiful because they're part of the story and it adds my own story onto the vintage piece. <laughs> After caring for all of the animals, I was off on a big drive to Brisbane to celebrate conservation and sustainability. And don't worry, I changed out my work boots. Bye-bye, goats. Bye-bye. And very soon, we are off to London for our special exhibition and book launch. It is next week from the 28th of November to the 2nd of December at Fitzrovia Gallery and we would be so excited to see you there. Thank you to everyone that has ever watched these videos. This started as a little farm diary to document the struggles and joys of living on the land. It has quickly grown and such a beautiful community has emerged. Our book is out now and available in stores or online around the world. Seeing the book's pages that are filled with so many stories of hope spread out into the world, into your homes and hands, makes us feel so emotional and very proud to share our hearts in such a raw and beautiful way. Thank you to our patrons. Your support guides us so much. This belief into our work just means so much to us, so really thank you.